Hello, Bethel friends and family. Pastor Joe here. You know today's Wednesday, so it's time for a Bible study. And we've been working through the Gospel of John. And yes, we are at the opposite end of the of the narrative of the babe born in a manger. We are almost to the point where Jesus, in that pivotal place in history, will change all history by his death on the cross, just like his birth changed history in the sense that uh, we have B.C. and A.D., and now the secular world says B.C.E., before common error, and uh, uh, after common error. And so we know that the, even even the timeline is is all wrapped up in Jesus. But we're at that pivotal point where Jesus is almost to the cross. We have seen him in the garden being betrayed uh, by Judas, uh, being moved. Uh, into a, a, a seemingly part, the beginning maybe, of a trial. And Peter denies three times outside that he is even associated with Jesus and the rooster crows. And so we've seen all that happening. And now we're just going to get a little bit closer really into the trial. But one of the things we see is truth on trial. That the very truth is placed on trial in this text and Jesus says, I have come to give you the truth, to share with you the truth. And the truth is God. And he says, and it's being rejected. It, it's it's being uh, displaced. It's being put away. And so we'll, we're going to dig into all that. But real quick, I found some notes on the internet. Yeah, you got that. Uh, truth, in metaphysics and the philosophy of language, the property of sentences, assertions, beliefs, thoughts, or propositions that are said in ordinary discourse to agree with the facts or to state what is the case. Agreeing with the facts, stating what is the case. Truth is the aim of belief. Falsity is a fault. People need the truth about the world in order to thrive. Truth is important. Believing what is not true is apt to spoil people's plans and may even cost them their lives. Telling what is not true may result in legal and social penalties. Conversely, a dedicated pursuit of truth characterizes a good scientist, a good historian, and a good detective. They're seeking the truth. So what is truth? That it should have such gravity and such a central place in people's lives. Well, it started with Aristotle. Well, it didn't start with Aristotle. It started with God. But we get this from Aristotle. The classic suggestion comes from Aristotle to say of what is that it is or of what is not that it is not is true. So to say what is is and to say what's not is not is true or truth. Isn't that amazing? Uh, in other words, the world provides what is or what is not, and the true saying or thought corresponds to the fact so provided. So uh, you either have what's the truth or you don't. And uh, if you misspeak the truth, uh, you know, there's perjury, there's all this stuff you can get in trouble. And if you tell, a, now my daddy would say, I'm not lying, I'm telling a fib. But if you believe it, now it's a lie, but that isn't my fault. I just told a fib, well, okay, let's keep going. We're going to dig into God's word and see what we can learn. And so what we're into is the Bible study, Truth on Trial. It's John 18, 19 through 24 and 28 through 40. Today is December 15th, 2021. Let's hear God's word. The high priest questions Jesus. Inside, the high priest began asking Jesus about his followers and what he had been teaching them. Jesus replied, everyone knows what I teach. I have preached regularly in the synagogues and the temple where the people gather. I have not spoken in secret. Why are you asking me this question? Ask those who heard me. They know what I said. Then one of the temple guards standing nearby slapped Jesus across the face. Is that the way to answer the high priest, he demanded? Jesus replied, if I said anything wrong, you must prove it. But if I'm speaking the truth, why are you beating me? Then Annas bound Jesus and sent him to Caiaphas, the high priest. Jesus' trial before Pilate. Jesus' trial before Caiaphas ended in the early hours of the morning. Then he was taken 
to the headquarters of the Roman governor. His accusers didn't go inside because it would defile them and they wouldn't be allowed to celebrate the Passover. So Pilate, the governor, went out to them and asked, What is your charge against this man? We wouldn't have handed him over to you if he weren't a criminal, they retorted. Then take him away and judge him by your own law, Pilate told them. Only the Romans are permitted to execute someone, the Jewish leaders replied. This fulfilled Jesus' prediction about the way he would die. Then Pilate went back into his headquarters and called for Jesus to be brought to him. Are you the king of the Jews? he asked him. Jesus replied, Is this your own question, or did others tell you about me? Am I a Jew? Pilate retorted. Your own people and their leading priest brought you to me for trial. Why? What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not an earthly kingdom. If it were, my followers would fight to keep me from being handed over to the Jewish leaders. But my kingdom is not of this world. Pilate said, so you are a king. Jesus responded, you say I am a king. Actually, I was born and came into the world to testify to the truth. All who love the truth recognize that what I say is true. What is truth? Pilate asked. Then he went out again to the people and told them, He is not guilty of any crime, but you have a custom of asking me to release one prisoner each year at Passover. Would you like me to release this king of the Jews? But they shouted back, No, not this man. We want Barabbas. Barabbas was a revolutionary. Well, as we dig into the text, we, we have the preliminary hearing, and yes, I, I type trial, but we have this preliminary hearing. Jesus is before Annas, and Annas is called the high priest, and then Caiaphas is called the high priest. We looked at this last week, that actually Annas would have been the high priest that the people would have seen as a person of authority, and Caiaphas, his son-in-law, Annas' son-in-law, uh, would have been more of a figurehead. And so Jesus is now before Annas, and Annas is considered the power player here. And so inside, Jesus has been taken here. Inside, the high priest began asking Jesus about his followers and what he had been teaching them. Jesus replied, everyone knows what I teach. I preach regularly in the synagogues and in the temple where the people gather. I have not spoken in secret. Why are you asking me this question? Ask those who heard me. They know what I said. What's really interesting here is really Jesus is saying, you were there. <laughs> you heard what I had to say. Well, you have religious authority. You have high, the high priest. Now, what we're going to see is we're going to see uh, religious wranglings and political wranglings. We're going to see uh, two really opposing powers coming together to work together uh, because there's an end in sight. And so the religious authority, the high priest, uh, instead of accepting Jesus, instead of knowing what the scripture says, he, even though he had preached now for three years, he starts asking, what have you been saying? Well, Jesus, as he starts to talk about being in the temple, what he's pointing to, two things. One, is what was said in the temple would have been well known. He is also pointing to Jewish laws and regulations and how things should be handled. And according to commentaries, this whole uh, mock trial or this whole trial of Jesus going before Annas was illegal. And the way they captured him, uh, the temple guards with the Roman guards, this was an illegal action and he was not being treated uh, as a Jewish citizen. Well, the next thing we see is truth on trial. Jesus says, you know what I've said. And if you if you just want to reject it, uh, go ask everybody because I've never said anything in secret. And so you know what's been said. And so he makes that very clear. Then one of the temple guards standing nearby slapped Jesus across the face. Is that uh, the way to answer the high priest, he demanded. Jesus replied, if I said anything wrong, you must prove it. But I, if I'm speaking the truth, why are you beating me? Now the truth specifically is on trial. 
Jesus says, prove me wrong. Why are you saying I'm wrong? Prove it. And so we see the truth on trial. Then we see the truth rejected. Then Annas bound Jesus and sent him to Caiaphas, the high priest. He just says, I'm done with you. Instead of being in a dialogue, instead of listening to the case and it being played out like in a court, like it should have been, and, it's, and, and according to Jewish laws, they should have called other witnesses, and a Jew could not be hit uh, in court. That was illegal, and they had high standards, and yet all of this has been rejected. Jesus has been rejected, but in rejecting Jesus, the high priest, the person with real power, rejected the truth. Well, truth is attacked by those who see it as opposition to their own truth. Annas had his own truth, and it was a truth of power and of and of finding and attempting to get his way. And so the next thing we see is reluctant political posturing. I just like the way that sounded when I typed it. And so now we have Jesus. Uh, Annas has sent him away. And, and we have this tiny little segue. It says he goes to Caiaphas. Now, the figurehead, the high priest, they're both called high priest. But now we get to Caiaphas, and, and this is almost like a footnote. It, all, it almost doesn't matter. Jesus' trial before Caiaphas ended in the early hours of the morning. Then he was taken to the headquarters of the Roman governor, who would be Pilate. Um, and so we don't really find anything out about what's happening with Caiaphas, what Caiaphas had to say. Uh, what that looked like, what it sounded like. It was just a footnote. And again, there was political posturing. It was the official high priest, uh, the figurehead, uh, doing what he was supposed to do. Now the governor will get involved. The, the governor who was appointed by Rome, uh, to, to watch over the people and actually to govern the people, uh, and to make sure they obeyed Roman law. And so here we have all this political maneuvering. Well, clarifying authority. When we get to Caiaphas, we realize he has no real authority. And so he has to send him on to the governor. And so we see here, we had some religious power with Annas. Then we have clarifying authority that Caiaphas didn't have any power. So they are moving in the stream to find real power. We get down to the brass tacks. And I don't know if you know what that means, but in a pole stream, uh, you would have a cloth covered by a pad of some kind, and under the pad would be brass tacks. And so if you were reupholstering a chair uh, or furniture, when you got down to the brass tacks, you were down to the bare wood. You were to the frame. So it's getting to the bottom of something, getting all the way in. Uh, then he was taken to the headquarters of the Roman governor. His accusers didn't go inside because it would defile them, and they wouldn't be allowed to celebrate the Passover. The reason I think this is so funny is they were getting ready to murder the Messiah, but they didn't want to walk in the governor's building uh, facility because that would be moving into the Gentile world, and they didn't want to defile themselves. They could not see that their actions of betraying the Son of God was pure defilement. Wow. So Pilate the governor went out to them and asked, what is your charge against this man? We wouldn't have handed him over to you if he weren't a criminal, they retorted. And so they're getting down to it. Listen, this man's a criminal. We're not going to give you any evidence. We're not going to tell you anything. This is what we say, and this is how it is. And then the real ask, what is really going on? Then take him away and judge him by your own law, Pilate told them. And then this is the big ask. This is what's really going on here. Only the Romans are permitted to execute someone, the Jewish leaders replied. This fulfilled Jesus' prediction about the way he would die. And so what were they after? They wanted Jesus dead. <laughs> I mean, they didn't want him on trial. They didn't want to hear his argument. They didn't want to hear his case. They wanted him dead. Well, humanity insists that truth be annihilated because everyone wants their own truth. But the real truth, we've got to annihilate it because we can't stand before the truth. Mm, boy, that stuff, isn't it? Well, the final piece of this is the trial proper. And the, and the term proper there, it just gives authority to what's happening. So the trial, and this would have been uh, the, the true place where action would take place. And, and we'll get to the sentencing next week. But uh, what we see here is, okay, this is this is the nuts and bolts of what had to happen, and this 
is, is where it gets really, really real. So in verse 33, we see, Then Pilate went back into his headquarters and called for Jesus to be brought to him. Are you the king of the Jews? He asked. Jesus replied, Is this your own question? Or did others tell you about me? Well, it's about authority here, present authority. And so uh, Pilate is trying to find out if Jesus has any authority. And so, but what we see, the very Son of God is being questioned about his authority by a man who is propped up by the Roman government, who has really no authority. But we see that in this space, uh, Pilate has the ability, has the authority to crucify Jesus, and that's what the Jews wanted. Well, more brass tacks. And so we have all this questioning going on. And so Jesus says, it's just your own question, if, if I'm the king of the Jews. And then Pilate says, am I a Jew? <laughs> uh, he says, your own people and their leading priests brought you to me for trial. Why? What have you done? And so Pilate wants to know what's really going on. Now, I read someplace that Pilate probably knew a lot of what was going on. And so he's trying to keep uh, rebellions down. He doesn't want Jesus' followers to rebel and to cause big rights. He doesn't want the Jewish people to rebel and to cause problems for him. And some commentaries said that Pilate had already been reprimanded twice by Rome because of problems with the Jews. But Jesus answers something very powerful here. My kingdom is not an earthly kingdom. If it were, my followers would fight to keep me from being handed over to the Jewish leaders. But my kingdom is not of this world. And you know that Paul says we don't fight against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities in the heavenly realms. And you know, too often we want to fight. And Jesus says, huh, there's something different going on here. And he says to Pilate, I'm not here to create a, a physical uh, insurgence. I'm here to start a spiritual revolution. And so something powerful going on here. So we get down to the brass tacks and then the shocking twist. So what's going to happen here? So Pilate says, so you are the king. And then Jesus replies, you say I am a king. Actually, I was born and came into the world to testify to the truth. Oh, here we go. The truth again. All who love the truth recognize that what I say is true. And so Pilate says, what is truth? What's really interesting here is he doesn't hang around to find out the answer. He doesn't want to hear any more from Jesus. So he goes out to the Jewish rulers and he said, listen, this man's not guilty. There's nothing going on here. And he says, but I know you have this custom and I can give you someone who's in prison. One of your own who's in prison, I can release. And he says, how about I release this king of the Jews? And what do the people do? They shout, no, we want Barabbas and we want this man, Jesus, dead. He said, they say, no, not this man, we want Barabbas. And so here, the shocking twist, maybe it's not shocking. We knew what was going to happen, right? But what we see here is Pilate uh, maybe toying with the Jews, but giving an out to them with Jesus. And yet they say, no, we have, we want nothing to do with this Jesus. Well, and the question remains, what is truth? But no one stays for the answer. Truth is on trial. Truth has been on trial since humanity was placed in the Garden of Eden. And they questioned, did God really say this? That's what Satan posed to them. Everyone wants to decide what truth is so that it will align with their own chosen truth. But in reality, the only way humanity can control its version of the truth is to destroy truth. When truth is sought, the conversation ends for lack of attention and a willingness to hear. Nobody wants to hear the truth. This, however, is not the end of the story. God's word will ultimately prove truth because he is truth. And one day, all of humanity will see the truth. Well. Before we get the blessing, let's ask the Lord's blessing on us that we might be able to truly receive the truth. Now, the opposite of truth is deception or is a lie. And we know that Satan is the father of all lies, that his job is to deceive us. And yet Jesus says, 
I have come to share the truth with you. The gospel, the good news of God, that God loves you, that God wants to redeem you, that God wants you back as his own people. And all you have to do is believe in me. You know, that's the truth. Well, let's pray. Jesus, we are indeed grateful for your love for us, that you didn't leave us in the dark. Uh, you came to bring light to our darkness, uh, understanding uh, to our dull minds. You want us to know the truth because you are the truth and you want us to know you. And so we know, Holy Spirit, that you will guide us into all truth, that you will remind us of everything Jesus said because it's the truth. And Lord, help us not to rebel against truth. Help us not to be the people who want to annihilate truth, but want to receive truth, want to live in truth. Help us to hear the truth. Holy Spirit, help us to hear you as you communicate to us. Help us to be people who walk in the light, who walk in the truth of Jesus Christ. That's our prayer. And we ask Jesus in your name. And all God's kids said together, amen. Well, maybe you scared somebody in your house. You said that so long. Uh, maybe so loud, I mean. Well, here's the blessing. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep is deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ. Though it is too great to understand fully, then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Amen. That's the truth.